Hey everyone, and welcome to the YouTube channel Light Sirens Action. I'm so happy to have you, and welcome to the first ever episode of Medication Monday. It is just a quick little mini series every Monday highlighting the different EMS drugs that we do administer out in the field. But before we get started, I would just like to put a quick little disclaimer on this video and make it known that the information that is about to be presented to you is not intended to be a replacement for professional medical advice. The purpose of the video is purely informational and you should always, always, always listen and adhere to your local protocol, dosages, and scope of practice. Basically, I created this little mini-series because it's something I so would have appreciated throughout basic, intermediate, and paramedic school. This might be a little rough, guys. This is our first episode, but just sit back, relax, and I hope you learn a little. All right, let's jump right in. Today, we're going to highlight the drug glucagon. Glucagon is also referred to as glucagen. It's just the brand name of the drug. Glucagon is a hyperglycemic agent or an anti-hypoglycemic agent. Same thing, just said a little bit different, and a pancreatic hormone. So glucagon is an insulin antagonist. Uh, essentially, when glucagon enters your system, it stimulates glycogenolysis or glycogenolysis. I never know how to say that. I've heard it both ways. But this is the breakdown of glycogen to glucose. And so this temporarily raises your blood sugar levels. Also, it is a smooth muscle relaxer. Glucagon is indicated with hypoglycemia, specifically hypoglycemia where you are unable to give D50 via IV, IO, rectally, or even oral glucose. Also in your beta blocker overdoses. And just a little side note, beta blockers typically end in LOL, so like your metropolol, your atenolol, and also your calcium channel blocker overdoses, which typically end in PINE, pene, amlodipine, even your verapamil, your cardiazem. It is also indicated in anaphylaxis that's refractory to epinephrine or in patients that have severe cardiac issues and they happen to have an anaphylactic reaction and they're unable to receive epinephrine, a lot of times we'll fall back on giving glucagon in these cases. So as you can see, glucagon has a lot of different uses that we don't even think about. Okay, we're going to touch on dosages a little bit. Just please remember as we go through all of this that you should always abide by your local protocol. Always. All right, for your hypoglycemia dose, it's going to be 0.5 to 1 milligram IM. Your beta blocker and your calcium channel blocker overdoses, it's a little bit different. It's going to be a bigger dose. It is going to be three milligrams to 10 milligrams slow IV push. And then your anaphylaxis will be one to two milligrams IV push as well. You don't hear of this given many times for anaphylaxis because it's kind of solving one problem and creating another, but it's an option. So your contraindications, hyperglycemia, hypersensitivity to pork and beef, patients that are unable to receive glucose through other forms like IV, oral, rectally, etc. Your adverse reactions, dizziness, tachycardia, nausea, also rebound hypoglycemia. You definitely have to expect with these patients that they will bottom out again and vomiting. Okay, I know we touched on this a little bit in our contraindication section, but just a special note about glucagon. We all know that glucagon is a last ditch effort for our hypoglycemic patients. So even if we see a patient go from unconscious, unresponsive to awake and alert and talking to us, we have to remember that that may not last very long. So we have to get the patient supplemental glucose and get them to the hospital. This supplemental glucose can be D50 via IV, IO, rectally, or even orally if they're awake and alert enough to protect their own airway. Glucagon is supplied in a little red kit, typically, and it's in a one milligram powder vial, and it is reconstituted with one ml of normal saline, and you just shake it well, draw it up, and that's how it's given. Okay, a few side notes on glucagon, and some of them are repetitive, but please bear with me. I just need to drive home a couple of really important facts. Glucagon is given via IV or IO only when it is being given for anaphylaxis or for overdoses. This is not to be confused 
with when it is given for hypoglycemia because that is an intramuscular injection and that's completely different. In the case of calcium channel blocker overdoses or beta blocker overdoses, glucagon is said to have a positive chronotropic and inotropic effect on the heart. And this is what they contribute to stabilizing the cardiac rhythm after these overdoses. All right, this is the third time that I've said this in this video and please forgive me, I just want to make sure everybody doesn't forget this. So when you give glucagon, no matter what you give it for, whether it be anaphylaxis, overdoses, or for hypoglycemia, it still does the same thing in the body and it still makes it to where your patient will eventually bottom out and need supplemental glucose. So please remember to provide them with that supplemental glucose and get them to the hospital quickly. Your peak effect for your glucagon is going to be between five to 20 minutes after administration. So typically this is when you're going to see your patients start to improve. Remember, please abide by your local protocol and scope of practice. This is just a informational video for those in the EMS field looking to complete their drug cards. And it's not to be used in place of local protocol. Thank you guys so much for watching. I so appreciate all of your love and support. Please comment down below what medication you would like me to highlight next week. Talk to you later, guys. Bye.